Hi, welcome to the Coastal Business Channel. Today we're gonna to do my favorite topic. I do not know why it's taken me this long to do this um, topic, but it is how to start an Etsy shop and tips to get your sh shop up and going. Um, so I had an Etsy shop. So I retired from Wall Street um, when I had my first son 15 years ago. And 19 months later, we had a set of triplets and then four years after that, we learned that one of the triplets had learning challenges. And we were honestly told that he would never learn to read, would hate school, and would have difficulty making friends. So um, I believe that the brain is constantly changing and growing, and that just because you're one thing when you're four, or two, or one, or whatever, or even 10 for that matter, your brain's growing until you're 25 that things can change. So I want to throw as much information at him as possible without killing him. Uh, and uh, via tutors and a specialized preschool, I needed extra money. We needed extra money because we already had the four kids in preschool and um, we weren't gonna sell our house and everything. So I started an Etsy shop and it kind of started as a dare. Um, I've never sewn anything before except for home ec class. Um, I don't even know, it was at sixth or seventh, seventh grade in junior high, I made a pillow. Um, had never sewn, not known to be artistic, can't draw at all. I can graph, I can graph. I can kind of draw houses as long as they're straight lines. Um, so my husband was like, well, you like Minnie Bowden all the time and all those shirts with appliques, can't you just do that yourself? So I went out and learned how to applique um, and quickly realized when I went to Etsy that people were using these embroidery machines and putting names on, that's what sold. So um, I decided that I was gonna open up an Etsy shop and my husband bought me like a $200 embroidery machine and I was gonna learn how to do this and I was gonna make money doing this. So I opened up with the Etsy shop from the standpoint that I need to make X dollars each month and I need to figure out how to make X dollars that month selling on Etsy um, and that's, you know, and I, so I will tell you kind of my process for how I made my Etsy shop. But before we get started, you know, let me tell you the mechanics of actually opening up an Etsy shop. It's really not that difficult. You need to go to Etsy.com. Um, I'm going to assume that you have a product in mind. So I will use my shop as an example, but I'm, but you're probably not embroidering, you know, baby led items and birthday shirts, um, but whatever your product in mind. So you're going to have that. Um, it's helpful to have a graphic designer to kind of come up with a logo and a banner. I did not, I did not do that again. I started my Etsy shop at this point, you know, I think 10 years ago, nine years ago. Um, so Etsy was very much the beginning. And so in the beginning, I don't even think I needed a banner. I just had, um, you know, that my shop's name, which was Kukuse was my first shop and named it Kukuse because my son was trying to say cuckoo clock and he couldn't. And, we just thought it was cute and I did start this shop off of my son or because of my son. So we use the name that what he came up with. Um, so I didn't use a graphic designer. I did actually, once the shop was making money and Etsy changed the way the layout of the shop was, I did end up having um, a design made for, uh, for my shop, for my shop's banner. Um, you should also have photos done. So it was kind of interesting. On here, I'll show you some of my photos, which are very basic. Um, but I started with like horrendous photos. Um, I always just use my phone, um, but it was interesting because I didn't realize like lighting and all this kind of stuff. And it really took me looking at other shops and how they did it to decide how to do uh, my pictures. Um, but you should also have a separate bank account. It's not necessary if, if you are a sole proprietor um, and you haven't set up an LLC. And again, I do have videos on how to set up an LLC. Um, I'll attach it to this video. So if you want to see how to set up an LLC for free, you can do that. Opening up a bank account is relatively easy. You just need your EIN number. You can apply for an EIN number without setting up an LLC. So, and you can apply for EIN number for free. Again, I have a video for that. I will, I will put that on here as well. Um, so again, it's one of the steps is to have a separate bank account open for the Etsy money to flow through. Uh, it's not necessary if you're a sole proprietorship or even if you're an LLC to do that, but sometimes it's helpful um, if you do have other people working for you and to keep track of your expenses. So it's, it's a good thing to do, it's not a necessary thing to do. Number four is the packaging materials. Um, for what I was selling, I could put them in envelopes. I bought the, the Mylar um, kind of plastic envelopes just shipped it out in that. I didn't have a problem. Uh, I actually could buy those online. That was the cheapest way for me to buy them, but make sure you have your packaging material because once 
somebody buys your product on Etsy, it's expected to be shipped out in three to five days. Um, I always try to ship things out sooner to, you know, beat my, beat the expectations of my customer. Okay, so, so those are the four things you should do before you get started. So now when you actually, you've got your product, you got your photos, you got your banking situation, however you wanna have it set up, and you got all your packaging materials, now you're set up to actually open up your shop. So you should have products like in inventory ready to ship. So you're gonna to go to Etsy.com, you're gonna create your account. Um, if you don't have a consumer account, you need to kind of open up the consumer account. And then you're gonna to go to the, you know, the little, the circle with a silhouette, it might have your picture if you put a picture in there. And you're gonna go down to the bottom where it says sell on Etsy. So you click on sell on FC, you're going to have your shop preferences. Usually it's, you know, what dollar denomination um, are you going to be selling at? And there's a couple other preferences you can pick. And then you need to name your shop. So this is part of my how to start a business that I'm going to um, tell you that I did incorrectly that you need to think about. So one, this specifically depends on your goal for your shop. So if you're opening up a shop and it's your side hustle and it's something you do for fun and if you make money, great, and if you don't, whatever, this doesn't pertain to you. If you are setting up a shop and you say, I plan on dominating this marketplace, I wanna make this big, I wanna make this into a company where I have multiple employees working for me, I wanna end up having a Shopify account and this and that, and I, I have these grand visions for it when i opened up coastal private wealth management i went through and i picked my shop's name and i got my domain and my url and i started my business and then i went to trademark my name and i was told by the lawyer i'm lawyer i'm using that it's going to be very difficult to trademark my name because there's somebody called coastal wealth in florida who actually doesn't even do what i'm doing he only does planning so it's very different well it's related but but different um, and he said, look, you're going to have to, you're going to get challenged and they're going to want more lawyer hours and all this kind of stuff. So now what turned into a simple fee to get trademarked is going to be big. So if you have any plans on being big, I would look to get your name trademarked before you do anything else. Um, now that's a problem. If you want to get, you know, start on Etsy right away and make money right away, uh, which is partly my situation is I needed to bring my clients over from my previous firm. So I really couldn't wait the four months to do the lawyer search on the names and all this kind of stuff. Um, I think if I change firms again or do something again, I'm going to get my name trademarked before I go do something. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, if you do not care about having your name trademarked, go ahead, open your shop, pick your shop name. So you're gonna put your shop name in there. It needs to be unique and it can't really be, uh, well, it can only be 20 characters and it has to be unique. It can't be something that is um, the same as another shop. It can be similar, like Etsy is really not that picky. Um, if my shop's name was Cuckoo Say and you wanna make yours Cuckoo Day, you know, that's fine. They're not gonna have a problem with it. Or Cuckoo Say and your Cuckoo Says. <laughs> So the next step is to create your listings. You can have photos and videos, your listing details, inventory and pricing. You can have product variations. Like, so for me with the clothes, like a birthday shirt, you can pick the size shirt you want and shipping. I will tell you a lot of that wasn't um, available when I, when I started my shop. So there was no product variations when I first started my shop. It was something that came later. I, I'm not so sure how good it is to have product variations. Um, and I'll tell you, the pro is you only pay the 120 cent fee for the listing. The negative is you only have one listing. When my shop was at its biggest before I hurt my back and um, had to have surgery and kind of made me kind of curtail my shop a lot because uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't move around to do any of the embroidering, which is honestly what my back is why I went back to uh, financial advisory work because I can sit down or actually lay down in bed if necessary and do my job. I uh, wasn't able to do that um, having an embroidery shop. But when, when there weren't product variations, I could have 20 shirts and have 20 separate listings, which meant I had um, increased probability of being top of the list. So when you would search for a birthday shirt, inevitably, um, partly because I was so big, um, inevitably my items came top, came up top. And then I had so many reviews because I did start early. I did do it for, you know, you know, 
eight years, I suppose, I guess it was about eight years that um, I had over a thousand listings. I don't even know how many, you know, stars and all that kind of crap I had. But I, because I got in in the early days, I think now it's harder to get in. I don't know. I do know that Etsy has like the Etsy learning area that you can learn how to do this. But I, I also think you need to kind of um, think for yourself as to as to how you want to build out and how big you want to be. Um, anyway, so that's so you have to create your listings, and you can pre preview each listing um, before it goes live, and you can kind of you know keep like all your listings together, uh, and and not publish any of them until you're ready. Um, then you need to put in the payment settings. So you want to know your tax filing status. Are you an individual? Do you file jointly? Are you sole proprietor? Um, do you have a registered, a legal registered entity? Are you a corporation? Are you an LLC? Um, all that is going to go into the payment settings, the country, your country, your name, um, date of birth, your address, your phone number, your social security number, all that's going to go into the payment settings. And then you have to enter in a credit card. It could be um, I believe it can be a debit card, but a credit card number, they're going to charge you for listings, transactions, and payment processing. And I'm going to go over those fees because they've changed a lot since I started. Um, so after you've entered all that information, you are ready to open up your shop. Um, your URL for your shop that you can send out on Twitter and Facebook to all your friends and family is either going to be www, I shouldn't say either be, it's going to be both of these. So you can choose which one you want to use. Uh, either www.etsy.com slash shop slash and then your shop's name. So mine would have been Kukuse. Or it can be like www.kukuse.etsy.com. So those are going to be your options for your, for your URL that you can send out to your friends. I mean, obviously, there's the other ways of just get, <laughs> going to the site and texting it to your friends on your phone. Um, you want to update your bio. You want to have your picture um, and your bio written out. I don't know that I ever did that. Um, I don't like pictures of myself. I might have put the bio because I had the triplets and all that and why I was doing the shop. Um, some people I saw that huge write up. I will tell you when I go to people's shops, I'm not looking at their bio. I think Etsy started, you know, I was like, I was part of Etsy when it was a lot more of a community. There were a lot of rules what could be sold and what couldn't. It was a privately owned company out of Brooklyn. Um, now Etsy is publicly owned. So when I was doing a shop, um, there couldn't be manufactured goods made from outside of the United States. But now Etsy's changed their rules and said, okay, as long as you design the product, you can have a manufacturing partner that does it elsewhere and brings it back in. That's really changed the cost dynamics of um, what Etsy sells and the pricing of it. And I feel like it really hurts the independent seller like I was, um, which is how Etsy started. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. I would really look at the pricing of products before you get your shop going. But before I run over myself <laughs> and tell you things that I have planned to tell you later because I've taken extensive notes to make sure I'm covering everything, um, you also need to have your shop policies. What I've read uh, when I was kind of just reviewing and updating because obviously the fees have changed a lot since I started because um, I wanted to make this this video with current information is that your shop policies should be short. Uh, when I did um, Leia embroidered items, baby Leia, Leia items, you know, um, bibs and shirts and bloomers and hats, baby shirts for first birthday and first Christmas and first Easter and everything like that, first Hanukkah, you know, um, people's policies were huge and long. Um, and, and a lot of it was because this were personalized and they shouldn't be returned. Um, I know a lot of times, even though my policy would say something and someone would file a claim, Etsy would always file with the buyer. Like the buyer always won. I, I think a few times they didn't, um, but it didn't even matter what my policies were. So maybe it's better to keep your policy short. But really what I would advise you to do, look what someone else Look at another shop that's selling what you're selling and what are their policies and then go to the next shop that's selling what you're selling and look at their policies and kind of come up with your own that way hopefully nc has gotten better at siding with the seller uh when it comes to these when the buyer files like claim but it was really kind of crazy to me um when i really would have this policy and i would show it to etsy and then they would side and i just would like lose my mind um and I think some people, some of the buyers on Etsy purposely scam sellers, in, in my opinion. 
Um, so watch out for that. You can decline a sale. And so there were people that I blocked and wouldn't sell to anymore because they would just buy from me, file a claim, and Etsy would side with them. And then they'd give me zero stars and bad comments. And I just <laughs> was like, I don't, I don't need this. Um, it, yeah, I already have four young kids that cause headaches and stress. I don't need to have this person, uh, in my opinion, scamming me. Anyway, so you're gonna have your shop policies and that's gonna cover um, processing time and shipping policies and payment policies and returns and exchanges. And returns and exchanges are usually the important ones. So I would look at that. Here are some frequently asked questions about Etsy um, that I was going through and saying, okay, so what if you guys could ask me if this was really interactive, it, oh, it can be, please leave comments. I will read them. I will respond. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about my Etsy story um, at the end of this video. So if you're not really interested in it, you can just uh, just uh, skip that part. Anyway, so is Etsy required by law to report income and sales? So yes and no. Yes, they are, but not until you've either sold $20,000 worth of goods or you've had 200 or more transactions in a calendar year. So if that has happened, then Etsy is required by law. They will send you a 1099K. Um, I ran into that because uh, I had my shop sales up into the hundreds of thousands um, and really not that important, you know, that hard. I, I'll tell you in one of my videos how to create your own little income statement with your expenses so you can calculate um, how much you owe in taxes. Also, I will tell you about um, there are retirement accounts, IRAs, and SEP, SEP IRAs, for personal individual 401ks that you can open to pay money to yourself in retirement funds to lower your taxes. You may or may not know, uh, that's gonna be another video, otherwise I can keep going on, but, but look into IRAs if you have an Etsy shop and you're looking to lower your reportable net income. Number two are how much are Etsy's selling fees? So this is crazy when I research it. So when I first started my shop, the fees I paid were 3.5% on transactions. I paid no transaction fees on shipping. So what you saw a lot of shops do is this item's for $8, but shipping's $10 because I paid no shipping on the, no t uh, transaction fees on the shipping. What SE has done, they said, no, 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 no. Uh, we're changing that. Our transaction fees are gonna be on shipping, uh, the, item, the cost of goods sold and the shipping. So we're combining it, the total cost that that um, buyer is paying, you are gonna pay a 3.5% transaction cost. So then as I continue with the Etsy shop, they decided that they were gonna group, yeah, the um, transaction fee and the shipping together and you're paying the 3.5% on that. <laughs> so I was shocked to learn when I looked at, uh, looked up this information that they've changed that 3.5% transaction fee to 6.5 transaction fee on that total. Not only that, they are charging a payment processing fee, which did not exist when um, I had my SE shop at all. Um, and I, God, I'm trying to think of like how many years. So I feel like I, I must have stopped my Etsy shop about four years ago. So a lot of this has changed in the last four years. Like some changes have started, but, but that, and so the transaction fee, um, sorry, the payment processing fee, no matter what is 25 cents, but it's 25 cents plus 3% of the amount of the transaction of the payment. So now, <laughs> Now you have 6.5 transaction fee plus a 3% fee is 9.5%. And then you have the 25 cent, no matter what payment processing, I don't know what percentage, depends what you're selling, but 25 cents automatically. So you're at 9.5% 9, 9 plus 25 cents. But wait, we're not done. There's more. <laughs> I feel like one of those commercials. And for free, you get, no, you don't get anything else for free. You get to pay more. So not only that, you also have to pay shipping. Now, I did have to pay shipping when I was had my Etsy shop. There's no way around paying for shipping unless you have a digital product. Um, Etsy says, hey, buy our labels from us, you'll get a 30% discount. What I would tell you, um, I bought my Etsy, my labels from Etsy. Um, it was the most efficient way to do it because your customer puts their address in and then all I have to do is hit print. Um, there's no way that I can make a mistake. And I did have people file claims against me because their item didn't show up to their house on time or their item 
um, went to the wrong house or went to, went to their grandparents' house, whatever. But my buyer is the one that put the address in. So when that happened and they filed a claim, those were the claims I won. And a lot of times they wouldn't file a claim because they would come back and realize their mistake. And my policy said is if you put your address in wrong and it gets shipped to the wrong place and you need it reshipped, because eventually those items would make it back to me, not all of them, a lot of the items would make it back to me, um, that I would reship it, but you have to pay for shipping again, right? Because that's not my mistake. So make sure you have that in your policy, but also it is much better to, have, to get your labels from Etsy. They do give you a discount over the post office and you don't have to worry about you know, writing an address wrong. So another question is, what can you sell on Etsy? So sometimes it's easier to say what you can't sell on Etsy, but we'll go through what you can and you cannot sell on Etsy. So you can sell products you created and have the right to sell. You can sell vintage items that are older than 20 years old. Digital materials that are written or designed by you and products you created with a production partner. And that's the whole, that's new. Like that was, that actually came across, I think that started uh, while I was still having my Etsy shop, but it wasn't at the very beginning. And that's where people got really upset because I can go have an embroidered item made in the Philippines for probably one eighth the cost that I can set and make it at my home. And you did, I did see that like when I first started making really pretty baby bloomers with initials on it, monograms on it, um, they were being sold around $15 on Etsy. I think when I was, and they were relatively easy for me to make. So I loved, I loved making and selling them. But at the end, I think it was coming down to like $8 or $10 a bloomer. And then they had, you know, that's when they had changed their transaction transaction fee to be um the selling item and the shipping cost so now it was like uh, oh and then they were encouraging you the other thing they started in this they started doing right before i left and i was i was very upset by it they were encouraging you to do free shipping and the problem i was running into etsy almost kind of demanding free shipping because they said we're going to give the people that offer free shipping are going to get you know top top order on the like the search page or like on the page so someone searches for monogram baby bloomers and whoever offers uh free shipping is going to be at the top the problem is is people weren't raising their prices so now you take the two dollars fifty cents the post office or se is charging for my shipping label to ship it and they're not lowering their prices um, and so now I'm also losing $2.50 on top of these price, like my price for the bloomer, I charge a discount at $10, but I charge $10 plus the shipping. So now it's $10 minus the shipping. So I'm not making $10 anymore. I'm, I'm making $7.50 and then you have all these other fees. So <laughs> that's partly why I was like, okay, this is just becoming a huge headache for me to try to make profit on that. It does depend what you sell. Some products have higher profit margins than others. Some are, some you do, if you have a production partner, then all you're doing is collecting this stuff and shipping it out. That's gonna be a lot easier to do. So I, I say, you know, you need to look at the pricing and the margins and what before you sell. And if you have a price that you wanna sell at, but you see everything else on Etsy is being sold at a much lower price, you might need to find another gig or find another product to sell. Um, anyway, so just to continue down, down the path, craft supplies are now allowed to be sold on Etsy. They were not allowed to be sold on Etsy um, when, I, when I first started. And again, it went from a private company to a public company um, and they're growing. It's been actually really good stock if you, um, especially during COVID, um, if you invest in the market. What you cannot sell. So you cannot sell items that are created from endangered or threatened animals. You cannot sell weapons or explosives. You cannot sell items that promote, support, or glorify hatred and violence. And you cannot sell copyrighted material or handmade items that don't, that, um, don't meet Etsy's guidelines. So you can't sell alcohol, drugs, or tobacco. When, it is, when you sell on Etsy, it is important to know the difference between copying somebody and getting inspiration from somebody. I will tell you with my YouTube channel, I am getting inspiration from other channels, like topics, like what, because I'm new and I'm trying to get traction and supply, uh, <coughs> subscribers, I look at other channels and what videos do they have that garnered millions and millions of views. Um, 
I do not watch the videos of these topics because I don't want to be copying. You know, I then do my own research and then I produce the video. Um, similar to Etsy. So you, you want to go onto other shops and see what's selling and everything. That's great, but you can't actually do an exact copy. Um, you're also, you're not allowed to use the name of an artist who inspired you. So I can't say, um, my baby, my baby bloomers were inspired by Kim Kardashian because whatever reason, right? Um, because people are going to, you know, find my baby bloomer when they search for Kim Kardashian. So, um, I might be selling items because of who she is and not necessarily because of my baby, baby bloomer. So you're not allowed to use names of celebrities or well-known products in the title or description. If you're selling something vintage, so I'm selling a vintage Louis Vuitton purse, I'm obviously allowed to use that because it's a Louis Vuitton purse. Um, I cannot say I am selling a vintage Louis Vuitton like purse. <laughs> so, you know, and the search engines of these companies like Etsy or eBay are so uh, strong and capable that they're going to find where you say things like that. So be careful um, with using brand names of, or even just names of celebrities and actors. Avoid tagging um, luxury brand names in general. So even if you're not using it in the title, in the tag for search, you may not use the luxury brand or celebrity's name uh, if it has absolutely nothing to do with your product. If you're using someone else's photo, make sure that it is a public domain photo, um, not something that's copyrighted by somebody else. If you are planning on selling branded products, look into can you get licensing fees? So if you're going to sell any Mickey Mouse shirts or I know Mickey Mouse was like hugely popular Etsy to go because you can get names put on it and hats and all that kind of stuff. Make sure, I shouldn't say make sure, look into getting licensing. Like I think a lot of shops sell a lot of Mickey Mouse and Star Wars themed shirts and goods on Etsy without having any licensing fees, but sometimes those companies will hunt you down. I did get a letter, I wanna say who was it from? It might have been like Thomas the Tank Engine, and I just stopped. I just stopped selling their stuff. Um, but the designs exist, so <laughs> you can buy the Thomas the Tank Engine at least w when I was on on Etsy. So they're selling something that they didn't have licensing for. But then, like I got burned for selling the ship shirt. It didn't cost me any money. I literally just got a letter, stopped selling it, and, and moved on. <laughs> Probably because I only sold like three, so it wasn't like a, a huge dollar value. Look at the, you know, make sure you're choosing the right shop name. Uh, I was early on that, it, you know, there just wasn't a lot of shop names out there and it was something my son made up. So it wasn't really that big of a deal, but make sure you're choosing a name that kind of that you identify with. I know with my channel, I've changed the name of my channel. Um, if you look to my older videos, um, it was 15 starting a business. I realized that I might be not necessarily aging myself because I am in my 50s. Um, but eliminating a target, uh, an audience, right? So there might be people starting an Etsy shop or starting a business who are in their 20s or 30s and now they don't want to li listen to the 50 year old. Although I have experience, so I can be helpful. Um, but choose your shop name, choose your channel name. Another piece of advice is add multiple payment options. So one of the things add Etsy gift cards, you know, add Apple Pay, Google Pay, credit cards, debit cards, PayPal. Um, in person, you can sell your Etsy shop using Apple Pay. I honestly, if you're selling in person, I would not go through Etsy if you can help it because they're charging all those fees and they'll charge all those fees if you go through Square. So I would figure out another way um, to sell in person versus going through Etsy. If you can, um, via Etsy, build a mailing list. So you can mail out um, holiday items, promotions, anything like that. Um, Constant Contact and MailChimp are great ways to, you know, build a email distribution. I should have done that. I never did with Etsy. Honestly, I had more sales than I know what to do with. I didn't, I tried to hire two employees to work with me. They didn't work at the same um, pace that I did um, or have this, you know, it was my name, my shop, my stars. Um, it was my son's education and tutoring that I was trying to fund. Um, they were kind of doing it for a little pin money. And so whether they sent something on time or not on time wasn't really that important. So I did not look to do any email marketing because I really just did not need any more clients. Etsy really does a good job if you're a top seller getting you clients. Um, and again, the last one, number six, is understand the seller's fees. And it, I, I really stress this because I feel that if someone you know said to me, I'll give you a million bucks to, to start an Etsy shop, I probably would for the million dollars. 
I wouldn't go about it with the same dusto at all. I would <laughs> because I feel that the, the way the fees are, it is it is much larger than it used to be. It is much more competitive than it used to be. And with the production allowed to have a production partner outside the United States with, that have a lot sell a, uh, a lot lower cost, it's hard to make a profit. So I when I started Etsy. Um, I started with the one machine my husband made me and I realized that as that machine is automatically doing its selling like I was like sitting around doing nothing so I bought a second machine so with the money I earned I bought a second machine so I had one machine here and one machine here and this was going and as this is going I'm putting the shirt on or the bloomer on I'm getting the machine um, I programmed all the designs the night before like when I was lying in bed I would program all the, the designs they would be on thumb drives and so I could just put it in the machine and do it. And so I got my second machine going. So as I did that for a couple months, um, then I got a third machine. I ultimately ended up with six machines. So I had like, I think I had three in front of me and two here and one here. And it was like a nice little C. And I had the machines all going. And I could make a shirt or I could make a bloomer in about 20 minutes. I could make a shirt in about an hour. That would take a lot longer. Um, and I realized that I'm making about 80 bucks an hour doing my Etsy. And I would, I would get up at 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning, do it um, before the kids would get up around seven. I would stop at seven. Now they were four, so they could kind of manage a bunch of stuff themselves. There was no more diapers, no more bottles. Um, I would lay their clothes out. They could get themselves dressed more or less, <laughs> sometimes less. Um, and then I would get them off at preschool. Uh, my one son I had to take an hour away. So I would leave the house, let's just say at eight, and I would make it back at 9.30, and then I would work from 9.30 to 1.30 when I would have to pick up the kids again. Um, and then I wouldn't work from 1.30 on, but that's why I worked early in the morning. And sometimes, you know, at night in bed, I would design shirts and everything, but that's how I was able to make 80 bucks an hour doing that. But now, if you say, okay, I was making $15 per shirt, well, now you gotta, you know, more than double the fees. I was paying three and a half. They're now, you know, $10. Uh, well, I shouldn't say $10, but they're now, you know, nine and a half percent plus the shipping and this and that. Like, I bet you I'd only be making, you know, $10 per shirt or maybe even only $8 per shirt. But not only that, with the outside production, I'm not making, you know, my gross margin isn't $15. My gross margin is probably $10. And then you have all those fees. I might only be making six or $7 per item on six machines. So where I was making 80 before, I'm probably only making like 40 or less. Like it, it, you know, so I really would understand the math. And I think a lot of people get scared of math. It's very simple, right? You wanna look at what item are you making? I would go look at the top three sellers. What are their prices? And you search it in, that's who you're competing with, right? So when I go search on Etsy, I go look and I hit lowest price, low price first. And so I'm gonna look at the lowest price items and I'm gonna look at the quality, I'm gonna look at their sales, I'm gonna look at how many stars they have. And okay, that's that's who I'm competing with, right? I was a lower cost provider, because again, I did not start Etsy because I loved making shirts and I loved embroidery. I do love kids. Um, I started Etsy because we needed the money so my son could go to a special preschool and be tutored basically five days a week. On a side note, I just wanna tell you this. I was driven to make money. I was driven to have Etsy be successful and I needed to make a certain amount of money because I wanted to do these things for Liam to give him the best chance that he could have. Um, so my mind is going to work with what are their fees now? What can I sell my price? What can I sell my, my good for? And what's my profit margin? I do understand that the people who are artistic <laughs> that are wired completely different than me aren't even going to look at that. And that's not even a consideration, but I think it should be because you do not want to get into a business because you love drawing pictures or making jewelry and think you're going to sell it on Etsy and make money off of it because there's going to be, you know, a price that you have to sell your good at. Definitely in the beginning. I think once you gain traction and you have sellers, then maybe you can raise your price some. But until that happens, you're competing with everyone else. So you need to stand out. So to, in my mind, you need to have your price on the lower side. So if someone flips a little toggle and say, sort this by lowest price that you come up. Or you need to buy ads. I did buy ads occasionally um, for
for a product I wanted to promote or, you know, I bought too many baby blankets and now they're not being sold, so let me promote this. Um, and I would pay a fee to Etsy to promote it to get to get the inventory out. Um, but again, that's money you're paying. So um, you don't want to start a, a shop on Etsy and buy all the supplies and all the materials and then be like, oh my God, <laughs> like I'm making no money. I'm literally making no money off of this or I'm losing money. I am, I am paying Etsy because of the cost of the materials that I'm using that, you know, don't use, equate on Etsy and the price I'm selling after all their fees, I'm actually losing money. So I, you know, I get that you're artistic and I, you know, I love artistic people. They make my world prettier cause I'm not, but it is, you know, take what I know to say, look, you do need to look at the numbers and it is important. Um, so one of the things you can do when you have your shop up and running is you want to have cost-effective shipping. I do believe uh, purchasing your Etsy labels is important. Uh, remove items that are not selling. So don't, don't pay that renewal fee. I mean, you can click to like, don't automatically renewal. So I would look like if this isn't, if this isn't renewing and to be honest with you, the automatic renewals didn't exist when I started Etsy. So, so like it was, I think I started and I'm like, where did all, where are my items going? I don't even understand. And then I would see like deactivated items or whatever it was called inactive items. And I was like, Oh my God, I need to renew them. Um, so you can always, not select renew if it's if it's not a um a fast paced selling item and then and then look reevaluate it later and look at your inactive uh items once a month and like decide what you want to reactivate so you're just not getting charged that automatically so i went over this earlier but some of the tips for um optimizing your product is sometimes uh so here are some tips to optimize your product listings one and foremost are are the photos everyone scans through and look at the photos pretty so photos always sell more than unattractive photos um sometimes you depending on what you're selling you should have you know your item next to an apple or next to a rubik's cube what have you so people can see what size it is um you also should have the size in the in the description so i always had like i use the five by seven hoop to do my embroidering um, I use the four by four hoop for this embroider. So people can't come back and say, wait a minute, I thought, I thought the embroider was going to fill up the whole shirt. And it's like, well, the example was on a 12 month shirt. You bought a 10 T shirt. I don't even know if they exist. Um, a youth extra small shirt is a huge difference. So the embroidery is the size, you know, you, with certain, with certain items that you sell, you are, um, there's only a maximum size that you can have. So make sure that's in the description. Hey, if, you, if you're buying an adult shirt, I will use a 10 by 14 hoop, what have you. Um, and the embroider will be this big. So make sure it's in the description, but also the other is if it's not a shirt, since that's what I did, I know it can be jewelry. It can be, we bought a whelping box for our dog that had puppies off of Etsy, beautiful wooden whelping box. Um, easy to take apart, easy to put together. I, I bought um, banks that are the initials, wooden banks that are the initials of, of our neighbor's um, newborn kids. Um, and that had the dimensions, cause I, and I made sure I read it, because I was like, well, gosh, it's so hard to tell in the picture how big are these banks? I don't want them to come and they're like this big. They, they were, they're beautiful. Um, but um, she did not have a picture with, the, with something next to it for me to be able to tell what size it is, but she did have it written up in the description, but that's helpful if she had. So you also want to just go through your photos and upgrade. So I upgraded my photos. I did notice my first few photos, um, the lighting was too dark. So then I, I upgraded. I saw what other people did with photos. So some had cute babies. My, you know, my kids were four and four and five when I started my Etsy shop. So I didn't have, you know, toddlers to really take pictures of. Um, and you can, you can always hire a professional photographer if you want, depending on what you're selling and the price points. It didn't make sure, didn't make sense for me to sell a shirt at $18 to hire someone to professionally take thousands of pictures of my shirts. Um, and I did feel that my phone ultimately worked out well enough. So Etsy has, this is totally brand new. Etsy has augmented reality. So where you can kind of have moving pictures, um, which probably would work for a bank, um, the wooden bank or maybe the welping box doesn't really work for um, the baby shirts that I made, it wouldn't really be necessary. And then make sure you have all the relevant attributes selected, um, in, in the product description. So you want to use all 13 tags. You want to make sure you use, you can use words or phrases. So personalized for what I was doing was always important or monogrammed were always important for me to have in the description. And then think of similar words. So I would have personalized, 
first birthday shirts or personalized applique shirts or applique named baby shirts, um, things of that nature. You want to make sure you have those tags. I don't know if it still exists and I, I apologize, I did not look. You could see the tags that other people used when I had my Etsy shop and I would do that. And because sometimes I'd be like, oh, why, why is my item not selling? You know, I have monogrammed baby bloomers because they're monogram baby. Well, someone had personalized baby bloomers. I was like, oh, name baby bloomers. And it was just, it was just interesting um, ways to kind of do your homework and, and look at. So this goes back to what I said with the pricing schedule. So I'm not really going to go back into the pricing schedule, but I would look, I would do it backwards. How much money do you need to make per item that you are selling for this Etsy shop to make sense for you? And when you have that number, or maybe it's a percentage, I would work backwards. Okay. They're going to charge this fee and that fee and this fee and that fee and and what have you and this is what i need to sell my item at and so when you say okay my baby shirt needs to be sold at 30 dollars, i'm going to type in personalized baby shirt first birthday baby shirt have it come up and be like okay who's selling it for 30 dollars? oh gosh nobody the highest price is 20 dollars. doesn't make sense oh gosh the Highest, the average price is $40. I can sell it for $30. I'm gonna gain some traction. Okay, I'm gonna do this. Um, so work backwards. So now we're gonna start on tips for growing your sales. So I would tell you, um, you know, I've mentioned some things of what I did. I was a low cost provider. I needed to be, I needed to gain traction. I think that's probably gonna be important now that the, that the market is so huge. So. Um, so you want to look at what the pricing of your competitors are. You also can grow, um, do, so now I'm quickly going to discuss because this video has gotten very long. Your tips for generating sales, for growing sales, you need to think about what do you, what do you do when you go to buy something? What are you making your decision on? Are you making your decision on highest quality? Are you making your decision on price? Or are you making your decision on who has the most stars and sales? And that's how people are going to decide to buy you. So I'll tell you, I have never once made a purchasing decision based on a video I saw at all. You want to show me the fulfillment process or a tutorial or whatever. I'm not making my purchase decision based on that. Now, that's me and I'm one person. If you and all of your friends make your decisions based on videos, then go ahead. The videos are important. I'll tell you, I make my decisions based on price the majority of the time. And it's gonna be, sometimes it's a combination between price and quality. So I don't need to have the very, very best in quality. I wanna have good quality. Um, and I also wanna have a good price. So I make it like based on value, right? Am I getting what I'm paying for? Or do I feel like I'm getting more than what I'm actually paying for? That's when people get really excited, right? I, I got a discount, like that's awesome, I'm gonna buy that. So in light of that, um, look at other shops, what are they, what is, where does your quality stack up with their quality? Okay, if you wanna generate a lot of sales, price yourself lower, right? So that's gonna be, in my opinion, number one. Number two is the picture. So whether it's augmented reality, you can do that, or just the general picture, your picture has to be top notch. It's gotta be just as good as all the pictures a little bit above you and a little bit below you. And if not, you need to upgrade that picture because someone's gonna come and see that picture and they're gonna be like, nope, not buying that looks, that doesn't look good, right? And then, you know, I guess ultimately back up a little bit, right? You need to have your item come up in search. If your item doesn't come up in search, who cares about anything else, right? So you make sure your tags are right, your title is right, go to other shops, what are their tags, what are their titles, I need it to come up. Now, what I would tell you, and this is what um, I did on Etsy, I had some money. I did not have a lot of money that I was willing to spend on marketing. And I bought ads in the beginning. I bought ads to make sure my stuff came up. And when my stuff came up, my picture looked just as good as anyone else's. My price was lower than everyone else's and maybe only by 50 cents, but it was lower, right? And I had my six machines going so I could do that. In the beginning, I had one machine, but I knew like, this isn't a sprint, this is a marathon. I need money for the next X years to get my kid tutoring for X years. And I really felt it was all through high school he was gonna need tutoring, but we've actually stopped tutoring this year in eighth grade, he stopped being tutored. Um, and so I knew this was gonna be a long-term uh, pro project for me or a company for me. So I need the traction now to help me out down the road. Um, and then you also wanna, like once you have your pricing set and maybe you're, maybe you're paying from some marketing, use the holidays, right? So I had, you know, 
you know, baby's first Father's Day, baby's first Mother's Day, recognize <laughs> that women buy most of my baby items. So definitely she's going to buy for the father, right? But they also like stuff for her. And then I did a couple of maternity shirts, which were harder to do, uh, mainly just to source the shirts to make, to make them. Um, but so you do want to like promote over the holidays, whether it's Hanukkah or Christmas, baby's first Thanksgiving. I mean, new moms for what I was doing, God, they loved like baby's first everything. Baby's first tooth fell out, baby's first haircut. Like they, everything's on Instagram these days. I kind of caught the Instagram wave with having all these shirts. It's actually funny. There's a commercial on at Christmas time. It was like in the baby in the commercial, I forgot what the commercial is for, but it's like my first Christmas. I'm like, oh my God, that's like the exact shirt I made. Now I'm sure it's not my shirt, but I bet you they bought it off of Etsy. Um, but anyway, so you want to go through the holiday, especially if you could, if you have things like, you know, you make earrings, you know, have a promotion on Mother's Day. Now a father is probably not on Etsy, but the, but I definitely send, um, links to my husband, like, don't forget my birthday. Birthday's in five days, don't forget my birthday. Um, so, you know, it's funny, my daughter bought me a birthday present like three weeks before my birthday. And my husband, she kept saying to my husband, like, don't forget mommy, don't forget mommy. I'm like, oh, thank God she's old enough to remind him because he forgets all the time. But anyway, depending on what you sell, you wanna have those promotions. Um, there are alternative to Etsy. So if you go through this whole thing and you actually listen to me and you look at the pricing and what you could sell um, and you just say, there's just no way I can make a profit selling on Etsy, you can open a shop on Etsy, on Shopify. Um, there's a company called Big Cartel you can sell on. Squarespace is now, you're able to open up a shop and sell. There's a company called Indie Made. Um, and then Amazon has Amazon Handmade, which actually took off and I started at, tried to do on uh, Amazon Handmade. It never took off the way Etsy did. And there's Bonanza. My problem with every shop other than Etsy, because my husband was trying to get me to move away from Etsy. I forgot what the reasons were uh, way back when, but was that um, you would have to do your own marketing. Etsy brings in buyers. So you're, the issue on Etsy is getting seen. Um, any of these other um, shops that I've mentioned or ways to have your own online shop, uh, you are going to have to do your own online marketing. Anyway, this was a very long video. Thank you so much for watching. Um, hopefully some of this or all of this was helpful to you. If you have any comments, I will tell you more about my experience, um, whether it was trying to hire people, how I got my shop growing. I did, you know, at some point I was making like $20,000 a month um, on Etsy. It was difficult and very time consuming to do it. Um, I do think it played into ultimately me having a bad back. Um, so hopefully you guys are all doing well and uh, good luck on your Etsy journey. Thank you.